This is Drew Benhair reporting live from the Statland Games in Avermont. The final round of the X-Bar competition is about to begin. The hometown favorite, John Smith, has overcome incredible odds to be here today. He's the first average Montean ever to reach the final round of an event at the Statland Games. In extreme barring, or X-Barring for short, the competitor jumps as high as they can and grabs onto the highest bar they can reach. If they grab bar J, their score is J. Their score is a discrete random variable X. Before the jump, we don't know what X will be. After the jump, we observe a specific value for X. There are several notions of average that are used in statistics. The most widely used is called the mean, or expected value. Imagine a large number of hypothetical jumps by John and tracking how many times he achieved each possible score. Say there were a thousand independent jumps, where bars 7, 8, and 9 were achieved 400, 500, and 100 times, respectively. The simple average of these outcomes can be written as a weighted average of the possible scores. The weights, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.1, are non-negative numbers that add up to 1. Each score is weighted based on the fraction of time it occurred in the sample. In general, the expected value of a discrete random variable x is the sum of possible values times the probabilities of those values. e of x equals the sum over x of x times the probability that big x equals little x. Each possible value of x gets weighted according to its probability. John, how did you get where you are today? I grew up in average mode and was always told I could never be more than average and that the law of large numbers says it is a mathematical certainty that in the long run, I will be just average. But now I realize I can change my average through hard work and practice. The sample mean x bar of random variables x1 through xn is their simple average, the sum of xj's divided by n. The law of large numbers says that for independent random variables, all from the same distribution with mean mu, the sample mean converges to the theoretical mean mu, with probability 1. But John is right that this does not preclude him from improving over time. His x-barring outcomes may be dependent, and may have distributions that change with time. And here's the jump. Amazing! John has set the new world record in x-barring! We can also think about the expected value of a continuous random variable through an x-barring example. Let y be the highest point John reaches on a jump. We can think of x as a discretized version of y. For example, just now John reached 11.2394 dot dot dot, and then he grabbed onto bar 11. If we imagine more and more bars being filled in, the discrete random variable measuring which bar was reached becomes a better and better approximation to the continuous random variable measuring the height that John reached. It then makes sense to define the expected value of a continuous random variable y as the integral of y times the probability density function of y, from minus infinity to infinity. This is analogous to the expected value of a discrete random variable, with an integral in place of a sum and a PDF in place of a probability. And now for my personal favorite event in the Statland Games, the Ski Loop. Lyra Loopski from Continuopolis, one of the greatest ski loopers of all time, is getting ready to begin. Here she goes! It's always amazing to watch Lyra Loopski ski loop. In ski looping, the competitor skis down a mountain and then 360 degrees through a loop and then straight through to the finish line. Let T1 be the time it takes to reach the loop, and T2 be the additional time needed to reach the finish line. So the overall time is T equals T1 plus T2. Lyra, that was amazing! How do you manage to continually exceed expectations? I focus on the fundamentals. I make sure to get off to a good start when reaching the loop, since that is highly correlated with how quickly I can ski the loop. Colin, so how did Lyra Lupski do compared to what we expected based on her past performances? Oh, I have a lot of data on that. In the past, her average T1 time was 2.95 seconds, and her average T2 time was 4.05 seconds. What about her average overall time, the average of T1 plus T2? Well, I haven't had time to compute that, Sylvia. Oh, let's see.
Oh, Colin, you don't need to do all those tedious calculations. We only need to add two numbers to get the average of t. Huh? The average of t is the average of t1 plus the average of t2. So Lyra's average overall time in the past was 2.95 seconds plus 4.05 seconds, which is 7 seconds. But, but t1 and t2 are correlated. Yes, but since we're just adding up a bunch of numbers, it doesn't matter what order we add them in. Oh. Expectation is one of the most useful concepts in statistics, not only in its own right, but also because it's the key to defining many other useful quantities, such as standard deviation and correlation. Sylvia is using the idea of linearity of expectation, which is an extremely important property. For any random variables x and y, even if they're dependent, the expected value of x plus y is the expected value of x plus the expected value of y, as long as these expectations exist. Linearity often lets us break complicated expectations into simpler pieces.